Hello, hello, boys and girls. This is Adesil, of course, and welcome back to another Counter Strike Go Beginners tutorial. But just like with the last video, if you haven't seen that, I recommend you checking it out. Unless if you're here for just one of the things I am showing, then just go ahead and skip to that. Who cares about the last video then? But if you actually are a beginner when it comes to Counter Strike Go, uh, you might want to check out the first video as well before you check this one out, or at least after you check this one out so link to that in the video description and also everything else I'm gonna be talking about in this video is gonna be found in the video description as well so what are we gonna do and talk about today we're gonna to talk about grenades uh, what are they how do they work how should I use them and when should I use them uh, all of the important information I'm gonna be really honest I'm not the greatest guy at uh, tossing grenades into awesome spots and that kind of stuff there's a lot of other people that are better than me at that like hat on games for example he makes some excellent tutorials for that but i'm going to be covering the basics right here and honestly i played counter strike for a very long time and i don't really care about those super cool grenade spots all of the time either sometimes they're very useful however so i do recommend maybe checking that out after you kind of get a good hang about how the game works at least and we're gonna take a look at the crosshair as you can see i actually just changed a little bit of my crosshair just for the fun of it so uh, let's get going okay guys let's take a look at maybe one of the absolutely most requested things out of all when it comes to my viewers and my subscribers have been asking for in Counter Strike Go and that is the crosshair. Uh, first of all I want to say that you can already change your crosshair but it is very basic when it comes to Counter Strike Go. You want to go into your game settings and then you have crosshair style and then the color and send some hood uh, changes you can do and also for example what kind of style you see the ammo and health, uh, bomb hood position, mini scoreboard position, mini scoreboard style and that kind of stuff. You can change that but it's like I said, very meager, very basic stuff. Uh, how you best change a lot of things in Counter-Strike Go is going to your game directory and changing your player config file. Uh, this is something that is... A little bit hard to do if you haven't done it before, previously in Counter-Strike or other games, but in a... In a config file you can change everything from the graphic fidelity or like how good the game looks like, what kind of resolution you play at, what kind of volumes you have, uh, what kind of crosshair you have, obviously. You can change your FOV, you can change all kinds of things in, in your config file. But like I said, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do, it's not super hard, but if you're completely new to it, I definitely recommend if you're interested in learning that you look up a video about that uh, also different game have different kinds of options you can change in the config files as well but we're gonna be using something that i think is a wonderful tool in counter strike go in and many other games but especially counter strike go and 1.6 and that is the developer console how do we get this bad boy up you've probably seen me use this before for example checking how much damage i got during one of my five versus five live commentary competitive videos and how much damage i did or how much i received from different players it's just a great great tool uh, you get it by going into options uh, then game settings and then enable developer console yes or no you want it on yes then the button you get it up with is the button left to number one and under escape if that is not the correct button on your keyboard uh, you need to google for example uh, csgo developer console button and then for example what country you live in because sometimes it is different from different countries because the keyboard layout is simply different and different keys do different things or the same thing but they're moved around so to say just to kind of point that out so what can we do here then we can type for example cl uh, under slash or, or space or whatever sorry I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at this I'm, I'm not even English I'm Swedish for God's sake uh, and put in CR and then we start seeing crosshair things so we can go down we can see dynamic stuff all kinds of stuff outline thickness color many different kinds of colors oh they're dot that, that's something I know I can put a one there hit enter and all of a sudden I got the freaking dot in the middle of my site, if you can see it on the video or not, I don't know, but I do have a little nice dot right there in the middle. So you can do a lot of things with this. 
if you just simply want my crosshair, uh, exactly like I have it, plus or minus a dot or some functions, you can just go in the description of this video and just simply copy paste uh, one out of these things at a time. For example, uh, maybe I have this line first, then you, oops, my bad there. I'm kind of screwing about here a little bit. I'm not actually used to using the console that much. I usually do my things in the config file, but there we go. And you copy paste it from the video description, just like it says, uh, one line at a time like this, hit enter, and then your crosshair is gonna change. And if you do all of them, your crosshair is gonna look just like mine. Uh, I don't want to have that dot there though, so we're gonna change that to a zero. Pop, and we have a dot gone. Another great tip, especially for beginners, is to make sure you have your crosshair set on dynamic. I have it on classic static. That means the crosshair never moves. If you have it on dynamic, you're gonna see big changes. For example, if I sit down, I get more accurate. If I move around, I get less accurate. If I jump, I get incredibly inaccurate. And if we, for example, go up on a ladder, it's even worse than jumping. I don't know why ladders is worse than jumping, but it, it, it just simply is. It's, it's just the worst thing ever. So never try to shoot anyone from a ladder because you're never gonna hit anything. <laughs> so for example, we're moving, we're kind of inaccurate. But as soon as you stand still, you can see you're more accurate. So this way you can kind of tell, especially if you're a new uh, player, when it's kind of time to shoot and whatnot. If you sit down, you're the most accurate, uh, but only for one shot. So remember that. You can sit down and then you can kind of see when you can shoot again until your maximum accuracy kind of gets back. And if you spam it, you can see it's big all the time. So quite important stuff indeed. I like it. And uh, like I said, you can change your colors and that kind of stuff. I'm also going to include under all of that text uh, or all of that options that I showed you, this kind of stuff uh, with my crosshair is going to be a link to a website where you can make your own crosshair with sliders. And then the website just gives you the information just like I put it in my video description. So you can copy it one by one into the developer console, hit enter, and then you get exactly the kind of crosshair you want. Pretty good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I thought you guys would like it. <laughs> so, let's go to the grenades. Okay guys, let's talk grenades. Uh, let's be super honest here now in the beginning. I'm not some kind of a grenade expert. We're not even close, I'm not even an expert at Construct Go to begin with, but I'm quite lame when it comes to throwing my grenades. I'm pretty crappy at it, simply because I haven't spent the time training. Uh, but there's some uh, basic stuff I definitely can help you with. If you are a veteran and you feel like these tips don't help you whatsoever, uh, don't fret, because uh, there is channels out there that cover some really good stuff. For example, Hatton Games has some great videos on how to throw grenades in really specific ways and spots. For example, he has a video showing you how to throw a smoke grenade all the way from inside T-spawn behind this wall and this house all the way over here and have it perfectly land every time in the sniper spot here in Mirage Middle so you only have to worry about snipers from catwalk and the connector onto A so you more easily can take uh, the middle so for example you can have someone throw it from there in there and then you personally smoke off the connector and then it's only short you have to worry about so pretty good stuff but I'm gonna cover more basic stuff like I said for beginners uh, first of all grenades uh, behave differently depending on how you move when you throw them and obviously how you aim if you aim too high up it's gonna explode in the air depending on what kind of grenade it is obviously and and uh, it, the throw kind of goes uh, differently depending how your character moves. So if you move backwards, the, the grenade goes a lot further, or a, l a lot less further rather, it goes shorter. So you can see this decoy grenade actually landed right about there. And if I then instead uh, stand still, this is uh, obviously a different grenade, but uh, trust me on this one, they do go further if you just stand still. And you can kind of see that right there is where the decoy grenade exploded now and it first landed there here's where the flashbang landed and if we go ahead and throw another flashbang whilst we are running and jumping at the same time we can get it a heck of a lot further as you can see right there we got it all the way to right about here it exploded pretty much in the air right here so if you had an enemy down here you could easily flash him that way 
without having your grenade come up short, so to say. Grenades also bounce, as you could see with the decoy grenade, uh, so you can easily, for example, have a grenade bounce on an enemy, so Sure, you can't see your enemy because he's standing right here in the corner. Then you might want to take up a 45 degree angle, throw it, and have it land right in the corner. Now, as I said, I'm not the best thrower, so my grenade ended up there instead of actually ending up here or here, where I ended it, where I wanted it to end up. But that's kind of a training thing. You can do a lot better the more you play around with the grenades and so on. Let's take a look at some more of the stuff you can do with the grenades. So, the first grenades we're gonna take a look at are the decoy grenades, the flashbangs, and the high explosive grenades. The decoy grenade is pretty much what it sounds like. You toss it on the ground, uh, you get a fake little marker on the map saying there's you are there uh, for the enemy. It really only works on enemies that are too far away to really see you, but they can see that something is happening on the map, if you know what I mean, and they can hear the gunfire. So, if, for example, your entire team throws your uh, decoy grenades, uh, for example, here in middle over at catwalk and then go back into t-spawn and go over to a that way the enemy might be looking more in this direction but most of the time they won't so really don't 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 count on your decoy grenades fooling them in any way like that but you can fool your enemies with the decoy grenade in other ways for example let's say we have a pesky enemy right about there uh, you have seen him he got you down to a low health you didn't hit him that much so you don't really want to peek him uh, straight up like a fair fight so a good thing is to maybe flash him or even better fake him because most players that have played counter strike go for a while they will as soon as they hear the sound of that grenade bouncing on a surface or they see a grenade look away and then look right back so you have a little bit of a window right there as they look away at any direction to pop in and start shooting at them. Uh, by that time, they have lost their focus on the objective, so they have to re-aim at you. And since you're already shooting at them, they might be a little bit scared as well or panicking. And that might mean you win the match, So for or win that gunfight at least. And that of course can win you the match. So a good way of using the decoy grenade is just have it bounce. Decoy and then go right in and start shooting. Don't even wait for it to go off, but like the second you throw it, move in and start shooting. That's a great thing to do. Obviously, it's gonna be useless after it has started going, because he has already moved away, but it's a great way of doing a fake flash without having the risk of flashing yourself. Another way, of course, is just to flash him straight up with a flashbang. It makes you blind. It looks like this if you're looking straight at it. Uh, you get blind for a long, long time. Uh, much better than a decoy grenade. But like I said, if people look away, you don't get affected that much. So a good way of flashing your opponent is to bounce it and then go in even before it starts going off and then start shooting at your enemy. And that forcing him to, to kind of look your way and probably going to get flashed by grenade behind you. Not flashing you so much, but probably flashing him a bit more, since the grenade is behind you, but in front of his eyes, since he is looking straight at you. Great tip indeed. When it comes to the high explosive grenades, they're great grenades for damaging an enemy or finishing off an already low on health enemy. It's not something you should rely on to get you kills. This is not Call of Duty, this is not Battlefield, the grenades are not very powerful, and there's a point with that. This is an FPS game. You're supposed to shoot your enemy, you're not supposed to drown them in grenades. I mean, anyone who's played Battlefield, especially Battlefield 3, you know how it is on, for example, <laughs> Operation Metro. It's just a clusterfuck with people throwing grenades, doing nothing else. And that's not very fun, and that's why grenades are not powerful in Counter-Strike GO. Because they want it to be a, a skilled man's game, a tactic man's game that knows how to use his guns, know how to use corners, strategies, and your grenades to your favor, but not to win with a grenade. So your very best, best bet is just to simply try to get your grenade to explode as close to the enemy as possible, so that would have been a great explosion if I just shot at an enemy and he backed off into cover behind this wall, he would have gotten, gotten some splash damage, and especially if you know the enemy is gonna be rushing you, you hear their footsteps, you for example inside here, and you can hear the enemies just damping down here like, like I don't know, enemies do, sounding like a hippopotamus attacking you, you quickly just get out your grenade, 
toss it on the ground and hope they run into it and do maximum damage against a couple of them. That's the best tip I can give you when it comes to that without going uh, too much into details, so to say. Let's have a look at the smoke grenade and the molotov cocktail slash incendiary grenade. So... We got the Molotov Cocktail or the Incendiary Grenade. Uh, it's cheaper on the terrorist side because it's just a Molotov. And you can't actually throw this as far and as accurate as I believe as the Incendiary Grenade on the CT side. Simply because this is much larger and a little bit more cumbersome uh, compared to the very small Incendiary Grenade on the CT side. But that is also more expensive. Uh, then we also have the Smoke Grenade. Let's have a look at the Incendiary Grenade first because I think this is something a very few people use really. And I think it's uh, kind of stupid that not, pe not more people use it. So, for example, here on the Mirage, uh, I like to do this. Uh, I come up here in the apartments as a terrorist. I check out the edge. No one's aiming at me. I go here. If there's not an enemy here, I... And I pretty much knew, know that the enemy is going to be right there or under here, because that's where they've been going in the last couple of rounds, or that's in general where people are, because it's just simply good spots. So let's say he's under here, under the ladder, so as soon as you jump down here, you gotta fight enemies from there, there, and possibly there, and maybe from the corner, and also behind you. Not good. Not good at all. So you wanna deny the person that's under there to actually stay there. So, either... Oh, <laughs> I missed. Look at that. I told you I'm not that good with grenades. <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, it does damage over time. It doesn't kill you instantly, but it's a great way of forcing the enemy out. So, if I actually would have hit my grenade, it would have bounced down and hit about there, and it would have filled this entire area up about this level with fire, making sure that he either dies or have to jump up here, or he has to move out, giving you one less place to check when you actually do engage and try to attack the enemy. Sometimes you might kill someone with a Molotov cocktail because they're, they're simply forced, they're stuck in a place. So, if, for example, if you know an enemy is in a corner, for example in this corner, uh, he's surrounded, he can't really move, toss a Molotov in there, he doesn't have a choice, he either dies or moves out of it. Uh, either way, he's gonna take damage and it's good for you. When it comes to smoke grenades, this is a little bit more important than the actual incendiary grenade or the Molotov cocktail, uh, because you can deny the enemy entrance, you can deny the enemy view of you, and you can also give you a good way of entering a base. For example, if I'm CT here and I wanna keep this position, this is the A ramp, or at least what I call it, I'm not quite sure if that's what it says, uh, palace tunnel, that's what it says in the game description, uh, but I call it the A8 a, or a ramp because it's it's a ramp up simply or kind of a stairwell anyways, <laughs> never mind. Uh, I like to place a smoke right about here because that blocks off this entire space and if the terrorists want to come at me either they want to wait either they have to wait for the smoke to dissipate or they have to go out through the smoke seeing absolutely nothing the same way the smoke works very well for terrorists like i said uh, if you checked out hat on games you can smoke it up uh, all the way into middle from t-spawn really good stuff or more simple things you can maybe put a smoke right about there by bouncing it making sure a sniper over in CT spawn doesn't hit you until you actually move out of that position. So smokes is very, very good, uh, depending on how you place them. Another important thing to think about is when you do pop that smoke, you can obviously hide in it. But the thing is that even if you're just on the edge of the smoke, you can see here, we're not even really in the smoke. I can't see anything right now outside, but people can actually really see me because I'm only right there. They can see me clear as day. So the smoke doesn't exactly indicate where where you're invisible and not it just indicates where you're blind and not so a person inside of a smoke is pretty much exactly blind the only thing you can really do is hear footsteps uh, and gunfire and you can also see gunfire by looking after uh, looking for muscle flashes and those are quite easy to see especially from assault rifles uh, when you're inside the smoke so think about that don't think you're safe inside of the smoke just because you can't see anything because the enemy might well very well see you inside the smoke uh, so yeah that's that's a good thing to think about that's gonna be it for this tutorial uh, obviously i probably forgot to mention some stuff so if you 
think uh, you know something that I didn't mention in this video or you, you know something that is uh, quite important to add, feel free to put it in the comment section below, helping others out at the, at the same time as you can look a little bit good and professional. Also feel free to give me some suggestions of what I can do to improve my tutorials uh, and very most important please tell me what you think about this tutorial and please tell me what you want to see me show you next especially if you're new to the game and you have some requests of what you want to learn or get better at or what you want to know about simply so as usual thank you guys very much for watching have a wonderful day bye bye